Let's take a look at some of the other functionality of the stamp tool and we've got the tool selected here. Uh, let's pick a stamp and the one here we've got uh, already active is the uh, one that displays text and the area. So the first field is just a text field that the user can fill out. The second one will be an area. You can see that down here. Uh, the one number one here, zero one, is text. Zero two for this here is area. Now you can see that the, the version one and version two are different for this stamp, which means it's a scale dependent stamp. So at different scales, uh, if we click on the edit button here, you'll see that um, the scale defining change is, uh, is 1 to 50. So it's going to use any scale 1 to 50 or bigger. It's going to use version 1. Um, any stamp that is uh, 1 to 50 uh, or smaller is going to use version 2. If you want to override this just for this particular use of the stamp, you can click use version 1 for all scales. Or if you click here, you can choose use version 2 for all scales. We can see that this is a linked stamp, linked to object, and it needs to be linked because it's got to return the area of the object that it's linked to. So let's just go ahead and place one of these in relation to this object here. So we click on the object, and you'll see that um, the box appears. Uh, that represents the stamp size and as I move it around you can see that the leader line is jumping around the object. Now in the symbol definition you can actually define these points uh, with 2D locus points within the symbol. Uh, so if you don't want to have it, if you always want to have it from the center or always want to have it from one point then you would only put one or two of these in. This one has three on the left hand side, two in the middle and two on the right hand side. Let's go with this uh, position here and because it had a text field that's a user defined text field um, the dialog is going to open and it's going to ask us you know what is the text we want to put there. Well let's just say this is area and so what's happening is that uh, that's user defined text and it's pulling the area out of this object. Now let's try that again with uh, um, a, um, a double leader line. So in this case we'll click once on the object, then click again and you can see that we've now got two leader lines. And we'll click a third time to place the object. Again we'll go area and you'll see we've got the area. Now let's say you uh, we wanted to reposition this object um, and if I was to bring this down here say for example um, you might want to actually have this now coming from the center point here up in the uh, object info palette you can see the anchor point here there's, uh, there's a series of anchor points in this object and we can choose whichever one we want these always are numbered from the top left so it's one two three four five six sorry, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Uh, so if we wanted it to be this one here, it will be one, two, three, four. This will be the fourth one. So if I set the anchor point to four, it's going to move to that point there and I can drag this point around on the drawing. Um, looking at this one, this only has a single leader line, but if you wanted to um, perhaps move this somewhere else and then you realized you needed a, a second leader line, uh, you can add that by changing this to 2, or of course you can turn the leader line off altogether. Let's set that on 2, and you'll see that the existing leader line divides into 2 and gives us the opportunity to move that around to create a double leader line. So that uh, kind of describes the leader line. If we look at the tool again and we click and then, then let's edit this object, you'll see that we have leader line attributes in the dialog here and we can choose the class that the, the um, leader line goes into so that you can set the attributes of that leader line by class. Or you can set them here to solid, fill, dash, uh, get it to use the class style if you're using class styles. 
or you can specify uh, the line weight and color and so on um, on a, uh, a stamp uh, definition basis. Um, so we talked about with or without a link to an object. Obviously something like the date or time wouldn't need to be linked to an object um, or the file name but something that is going to return information from an object for example uh, uh, a symbol name, area, perimeter and so on is obviously going to need to be linked to an object. Um, okay now in the uh, symbol definition uh, every time that you create a block of text and fill that text with hash and a number and then a second hash that indicates to the multi-snap object that that is a text field that it needs to deal with. So there's two text fields in this here. When you then want to edit this, if you select the, uh, the desired field then you can choose the field type that it's going to be from this field format menu. Let's go through the options that uh, this menu offers. So if you create the symbol and, and uh, have that text in the symbol it can return the area of the object that it's linked to, the class, it can have a counter like the, uh, the door or window ID, uh, it can return the date, the file name, you can have a formula. So the formula can do stuff like return the um, the area or the perimeter of the of an object and then multiply that by uh, a particular value if you wanted to get a dollar value um, worked out in uh, in a formula. It can return the layer that the object is on, it can return the layer scale. Obviously these ones uh, need to be linked to an object. If the object has a name it can return the object name. Um, if uh, the object is linked to a plug-in object like a window object or a stair object or a table and chairs object it can return a parameter value from that object. Uh, you can get the perimeter from an object. If the object has a record attached to it you can return a field value. Uh, you can refer to another uh, stamp field. Um, I'm not quite sure when you would use that one but you could actually make this field here return the value of that field there for example. Um, the stamp symbol name so you can actually get it to return the the definition of uh, name of the symbol that's used um, for the uh, the stamp object itself. You can link to uh, an object and return the symbol name uh, so for example you might have an electrical fitting that has um, you know a name like light fitting you would get a stamp to actually return the name of that object. Uh, text, we've talked about text, time, uh, return the time that the stamp was put in. Uh, a worksheet cell, so you can get the stamp to actually refer to a cell in a worksheet on your drawing. You can get the X and Y coordinate. You can get uh, a Z height, which is kind of like a, a, um, a fake Z height, one that you've actually typed in yourself. Or you can actually get the Z height um, of an object, of a 3D object. Um, you can get uh, the dimensions, um, so X, Y and Z, and you can also have no field definition at all. So these are all of the options for any text field. There are quite a few there. So you can set up quite a complex stamp if you want to. And when you choose one of these options, for example, uh, if we had the area option, you click the edit button here, there'll be a slightly different set of options available. Um, you can always, you can generally always add a prefix or a suffix. You can insert it as a variable or as text. If you insert it as a variable, it means that the object it, it's linked to, um, if the object it's linked to changes, then uh, when you update the stamp, the stamp will also change or you can insert it as text which means that it's once it's inserted it won't change. If the object you're linked to has a record attached to it you can even get it to write uh, something like the layer name or the class or any of those field values here to the record that was attached to that. We use this uh, for numbering the window and door objects so that when you actually place the uh, the ID it writes to that record format attached to the door to the window object. Um, we can also have uh, tolerance values as well. 
So quite a, a lot of options there. Uh, finally, this, uh, this one down here refers to the size of the object. Uh, this is quite handy because you might quite like the, uh, this, um, this definition here, but it might just be a bit too big or, you, or you know, one of the door or window IDs, you might like it to be bigger or smaller. Well, you can just change this, the, the scale of this um, and I'll show, show you that in a moment, how you can do that. Um, that's basically what this dialogue uh, is about. Then when you do have um, a stamp that is re returning area or perimeter or something like that, you can specify the units that are dis it's displayed as. So if we click that units button there, um, so if we're displaying area, you can say yes, please display areas in, uh, in square meters show the unit mark which will be the unit mark that's defined in the units dialog in Vectorworks and what precision so if you wanted to display the area to three decimal places in square meters you'd have it set up like this if the area was less than one meter you can choose to display uh, a leading zero so if it was if it was like 0.5 of, of a meter it would display as 0.5 if you've got this set to three decimal places and you also have trailing, then that would display as 0 0.500. So it would always give those three decimal places. Uh, for perimeter, for example, you might say, look, I want the perimeter in millimeters, precision to zero, uh, no leading or trailing. And for dimensions, uh, you might say, look, they want to be in uh, millimeters and we don't want to show a unit mark and the precision is zero. So that's what that one is for. Um, in the miscellaneous here, uh, this is just some extra functionality. Warn if uh, record links do not exist, always display the input dialog and mark inconsistent stamp objects. And organize stamps um, basically allows us to uh, manage the stamps and edit them, bringing up that same dialog as we had before. Uh, rename the stamp, um, duplicate the stamp if you've got one there that's close to what you want, uh, or create a new stamp. Now, um, these uh, these stamps here are linked to these two objects and you can demonstrate this by selecting the, the stamp tool and uh, and clicking on this delete link button when you put the cursor over an object that's linked to a stamp with the delete button there it changes shape to indicate well this this isn't linked to anything but this is linked to something so it then becomes unlinkable and that's what this option is for this one here is allows you to link an existing stamp to a different object so if I wanted to change the link of this stamp from this rectangle here to this circle I would draw a line uh, using this um, mode create or edit a link create a line from here down to here I'm going to do that you'll see that the area will change and I could then take the stamp and move it down onto there so it's now referring to this object. If I go back to the stamp tool um, you'll see the delete stamp link. This object used to have a stamp uh, attached to it. I can then unlink that or delete the information that's uh, attached invisibly to this object saying it was linked to something. Click on that and you'll see it's now uh, gone. Again, let's just repeat that. If I want to change this link from this rectangle to this circle, I just draw a line from here to here. Delete this as a linked object. And then, using the 2D cursor, I can select this and move the leader line down here. Sorry, got the wrong part of the leader line. Move the leader line down here and possibly also change this from anchor point 4 to anchor point 5. There we go. Now I wanted to show the scaling of stamps. Um, 
these stamps here, if we look in the resource browser for this file, um, this stamp here is a window um, ID hexagonal. Now let's say we wanted to change the size of those. We'll take the tool and click on the edit stamp. Choose that particular stamp which was the window ID hex small. Click the edit button and here we are and the scale factor is currently 1 so it's displaying at the original size that I defined it in the symbol. So if I change this to 1.5 and click OK you'll see it's now saying that the scale is uh, uh, is 1.5 times the original so you can see that it's been scaled. I click OK. Um, now I just need to update these stamp objects which I could do um, on a case-by-case -case basis or I can just do it by clicking the update button here. Let's click none then just choose to update this one. Click OK. and you'll see that those objects will now change size in accordance to the change I made to that definition. Now that change has only happened to these uh, to the stamps in this file. It hasn't changed the master uh, definition file. So you can see there's quite a bit of depth to the tool and uh, hopefully this movie has given you a bit more of an idea of uh, what you can do with it.